Okay, I have 5.30. So let's go ahead and convene this meeting of the Board of Directors of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District um, on January 20th, 2022. Holly, would you call the roll? Yes, President Mayhood. Here. Vice President Henry. Lois, you're muted. Trying to unmute me. <laughs> Here. Thank you. Director Ackman. Here. Director Fulf. Here. And Director Smalley. Here. Okay. Are there any additions and deletions to the closed session agenda? Staff has none, Chair. Okay. Um, this is the time for oral communications regarding items in closed session on the agenda from members of the public. And I don't see any um, members of the public among the attendees list. And are there any phone people phoning in? I don't see any. So hearing none, seeing none, um, we will now adjourn to closed session. So we'll convene now our open session and I'll report out actions taken in closed session. The board voted unanimously five to zero to accept the district manager's goals and objectives for December 21 through November 22. And these will be posted to the district website shortly so that all members of the public can view them. Um, Holly, would you call the roll, please? President Mayhood. Here. I'm, I'm not hearing anyone, so oh, I'll try here. again. Okay. President Mayhood. Here. Maybe I spoke too quietly. Holly, did you hear the chair respond? Are you hearing no. anything? Can you hear me, Holly? Holly, can you hear me? I, yeah, now I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, uh, chair uh, answered present. I'm here. No, I can't. Um, okay, well, I'll maybe I'll calling uh, in. Rolls by, right? Can you see people raise their hands so that you do it that way? I don't have, Mark is not showing, and uh, that's yeah. all. But um, well, Mark, yes, I could, I can if you could. <laughs> yeah, the, the full board is present. Okay, I can see everyone is there, except I do not see Mark Smalley, but I see his name. Can you hear me? Yes. We hear you loud and clear. I think she has one-way media going. Yeah. It's, good. it's only solved by dropping and reconnecting. Too good to be true. Okay, well, I think we'll go ahead and just uh, say that we're all here, Holly, and um, why don't you, as Bob suggests, disconnect, try again, and see if it comes back uh, better. Just make sure before you leave that we are definitely recording so that we have the tape. We are. Uh, CTV great. is recording, and okay, we've okay. recorded that all board members are present. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and um, continue on. Um, additions and deletions to the agenda? Staff has none, Chair. Okay. Um, this is the time uh, where we have oral presentations from the public um, on any topic that is within the jurisdiction of the district that is not on tonight's agenda. And I see we do have uh, seven attendees. Um, would anybody like to address the board right now? Uh, I don't think we have any phone-ins, so uh, I guess we'll... Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Brian, Brian Pham. Hello. Uh, 
Yeah. Brian, I think, am I the only one that it's kind of garbled? No, he's garbled to me too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Could you hear me now? Yeah, that's better. Hello. Okay. Um, I just wanted to address the board to see uh, if you folks would talk about the merge for San Lorenzo uh, Water District as well as the Big Basin Water. Uh, if you're asking, um, um, I think Brian, you you contacted me by email, and I said that um, you should address um, uh, our district manager Rick Rogers for the latest information on that. That's not really on, um, you know, something that, that we can talk about in great detail right now tonight. But Rick, if you just want to give him a quick update. I have an email uh, from Brian that he needs uh, to talk with someone from the district no later than this Friday. And he is on my list to call tomorrow. I have his contact number. He's both left me an email and um, district secretary. So we, I will be contacting him tomorrow. But Brian, we do not plan to talk about the merger tonight as it's not on the agenda. Jamie, did you have something you wanted to? I just wanted to offer that as an explanation to Brian that, you know, if he's if he may not have attended these meetings in the past, and unfortunately, we can only speak to things that have been previously agendized. He can talk to us about whatever he'd like to, but we would need to ha have the staff put it on the next agenda to come back with any kind of a response. I do believe Brian's a, a journalist that is working on a story, um, and uh, he has a deadline of tomorrow on what my emails um said, and I plan to contact him before noon tomorrow. Yeah. Did you hear that, Brian? We'll have contact before noon tomorrow. I, okay. Let's yes. Uh, yes, so, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate right. that. Yeah. Um, okay, any other um, communications? All right. Seeing none, hearing none, we'll go ahead to the next item, which is the president's report. I don't have much to report. I just want to say uh, that the admin committee and the budget and finance committees have met. Um, Jamie Ackman will be the chair of the admin um, committee this coming year, and I'll be the chair of budget and finance. I also just wanted to um, provide by way of explanation of what, what, why we had to cancel the meeting. Um, last uh, time, and that was that um, 15 of our staff um, have been working at home due to COVID, including our district manager. Um, he's still under quarantine and is joining us um, from um, his home tonight, and he's he's got a limited voice, so um, we, we don't want to tax it too much because it makes him start to cough if he talks too much. Um, but I just want to emphasize that, you know, we've been there, it's kind of distributed across uh, the different groups. And so clearly most of this is a, a matter of, you know, community transmission. It's not so much what happened within the district. And it is nearly 50% of our staff. So despite this, we're, you know, people are still working, we're still providing water, everything's still ongoing. But um, I hope people will be a little bit patient. Both us as members of the board and, and members of the public that we're working under kind of, you know, uh, with one arm behind our back right right now. Okay, um, let's go ahead to the um, unfinished business. Uh, the first is the board uh, policy manual. And um, shall I turn that over to Gina? Please. Okay, thanks Chair Mayhood um, and, and Rick. This item, of course, is coming back to the board after our discussion, our, the board's prior discussion at the December 7th meeting. Um, at that meeting, um, the board was presented with a memo listing some, some conceptual changes to the board policy manual. Uh, and we also talked about uh, making a change to clarify the terms of the committee member. Um, so what you have in front of you tonight is that the board at that time sort of uh, provided some input on those conceptual changes 
and I have brought back a resolution and a red line um, version of the policy manual and a final version uh, that the board could adopt tonight that would implement um, the changes that were previously discussed. In addition to that, there is a process that we kicked off at that December 7th meeting that unfortunately I was not able to conclude um, over the holidays of obtaining input from uh, board members as to any additional conceptual changes that we may need to handle in sort of a second round um, within the next, uh, you know, in the near term. Um, I did receive some input by the deadline and I also got some comments after the deadline of December 17th and, and, and I apologize for not sort of moving the ball forward to get that all wrapped up. Um, but um, what I would like to do, and in particular, one comment that I got after the deadline that was a good one was that the, you know, it probably doesn't make sense to just kind of shove the descriptions of the environmental and the engineering committee, the old descriptions together. It needs to be kind of rewritten to reflect a single committee. Um, I, and I think that makes a lot of sense. But what I'd like to do in order to make sure that all of that input gets considered by the full board is I'd like to extend the deadline for board members to provide me your requested conceptual changes to Monday, which is um, January 4th. And of course, any that have already been provided to me will be included. Um, and then once I have those, I will package them up and send them back out to the board along with a list so that we can take kind of a poll as like we did before via email. And then all of that input's gonna go into a future board packet um, for consideration by um, the whole board and, and approval of, of, of any additional changes that, that the board agrees with. Um, but for tonight, what you have in front of you is simply a resolution and a, a, a changed policy manual um, to reflect those those items that were previously discussed. Okay. Um, you want a motion? Yeah. Well, let, let's let's have a discussion first to see if there's anybody that wants to make a comment on this. So changes are minor. Um, are there any comments from the board? I don't have any further comments. Okay. Um, let me go out. So um, go ahead, Lois, if you want to make a motion, and then I will go out to the public for comments. Okay. Um, San Lorenzo Valley Water District Board of Directors Policy Manual for 2022. A motion. Yes. Yeah. So we're, we're the, the motion is to adopt the attached resolution, adopting and approving district's board policy manual for 20 but it's down in the in the bottom there where does it say it at the top shall i restate that i think maybe i was speaking over lois um let, let me just rephrase that um that it's moved that the the board adopt the attached resolution adopting and approving the district's board policy manual for 2022. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Okay. And let me just go out to uh, members of the public. Um, if anybody would like to comment on this before we take a vote. Okay. I don't see any hands up. So, um, Unless any board members want to say anything, let's let uh, let's see. Is Holly Holly? There you are. Um, Holly, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay. So, would you take a roll call vote, please? Yes. Um, President Mayhood. Aye. Vice President Henry. Yes. Director Ackman? Yes. Director Fulls? Yes. And Director Smalley? Yes. Okay. The motion passes unanimously. Um, the next item is uh, related and sort of an automatic uh, fallout from the adoption 
um, and I'll let uh, Gina talk about this one. Sure, thank you. I don't have um, much more to say about it. Um, uh, because the board policy manual revisions that were just adopted included combining the environmental and the engineering committee, that, that has now done, that, that was done as part of the changes to the board policy manual, um, but the membership has not been updated. And so this item, the purpose of this item is to um, identify who will be the members of the newly constituted environmental, combined engineering and environmental committee, and to establish the number of seats on the committee um, for purposes of determining whether there's a quorum. Okay. Um, so what I'd like to do is just propose a motion that essentially combines the memberships of the two previous committees as we, uh, in terms of the public members and um, the board members as we discussed at the last meeting. So what I am moving is that we appoint Mark Smalley and Bob Fultz as the board members on the in Engineering and Environmental Committee and that we also appoint Ken Landy, Elena Lang, Michael Murphy as the public members, and that we set the committee membership to five. Okay. I'll, sec I'll second that. Thank you. Any discussion among the board members? No? Any discussion among the public? Comments by the public? All right. Uh, Holly, would you take a roll call vote, please? Director, excuse me, President Mayhood? Uh, aye. Vice President Henry? Yes. Director Ackman? Yes. Director Fulz? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Okay. Um, the next item is the, what is becoming routine, um, the alert, uh, meeting authorization. And so the motion would be, to readopt, ratify and readopt the attached resolution um, that uh, authorizes continuation of remote meetings um, for, per AB 361. So moved. Okay. Second? Second. Second. Okay. Yes, we probably need to discuss it. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm going to really take a big leap here and ask Holly to <laughs> take a roll call vote. Do you want to just ask the public? I, I'm not sure. Yeah, we should ask. All right, go ahead. I don't see any hands up, but if, you, if you're just dying to talk about this, please go ahead. <laughs> All right. I will, I will, before we vote, just make the comment that um, Rick informed me that we're, uh, the staff is making some progress on preparing the Johnson building uh, for hybrid meetings in the future. The progress is a little bit slow because we've been shorthanded because of uh, COVID, but we are making progress on that. Okay, Holly, fire away. Okay. Um, President Mayhood? Aye. Vice President Henry? Yes. Director Ackman? Yes. Director Falls? Yes. And Director Smalley? Yes. And I'd like to add that I can appreciate, even with this dry subject, of uh, Gail and Bob are both able to laugh at it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right. Oh, Mark, you're killing me. <laughs> On to new business. Um, the first item is Glen Arbor Bridge Mainline Pipe Replacement Award of Construction Bid. Yes, and I will ask the, the district engineer to present this item to the board. Josh. Thank you, Rick. This item is a request that the board award by motion a construction contract to MPE, Monterey Peninsula Engineering, for construction of a new water pipeline running across the bridge at Glen Arbor Road and Highway 9. The new pipeline is intended to replace a, an existing pipeline which leaks and has been, well, we've been working towards this for a while. We went out for bid a couple of months ago and 
got four bids in. I was pretty happy with that. It actually was more than I expected for this particular project. MPE's bid was low at 320,500. The next low was Anderson Pacific, roughly $26,000 higher. Both were responsive. So staff is recommending that the project be awarded to MPE. I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay. Um, let's start with any comments, Mark. You, since you're the chair, uh, have been the chair of the engineering committee. Um, I agree with Josh. Uh, there were no exceptions uh, in MPE's bid. Um, I found it to be satisfactory and uh, concur with staff's recommendation that we would award this contract to them. I also uh, like the fact that we received four bids. I'm seeing this now is a trend in a lot of the, uh, particularly the construction contracts that we're getting multiple bids. Uh, that's great. So good job, Josh. Okay. Thank you. Um, any uh, questions from other members of the board? Jamie? Thanks. I, I just was wanting to understand actually. Um, so, uh, in in working alongside the county to um, schedule and plan this, um, you know, you mentioned that you think that there are cost savings associated with that, which I agree. Of course, there always are when you get some, you know, uh, you know, order of magnitude savings. But I'm just curious, like, is there any way to quantify that when you look at these projects? Like, is there is there a way to quantify what we're you know saving in those inefficiencies? I'm sorry, Director Ackman, you've lost me. So um, <laughs> with, we we worked with the county, right, to try and permit this project so that we were doing it alongside other work that they were doing, correct? Oh, no. This project is not one that that is the case for. We are doing that with the 2020 pipeline projects, both the FEMA project and the CIP project. We did that with the California Drive, the 2020 pipeline projects. Mm -hmm. And we were able to, let me back up a second. We're also doing that on Quail Hollow, which we right. have been recently awarded and is probably top of mind right now. So I'm guessing that's where the connection was made. I'm, to answer your question regarding the other projects, as opposed to on this one, the places where we are gaining financial benefit are the repaving and, and resurfacing requirements that the county puts on us. Under ordinary circumstances, if the county was not doing any kind of road resurfacing in those areas, we would be required to not only backfill our trench and restore the pavement surface, but also to put down what they call a type two slurry seal for the entire width of the lane for the entire length of our project, which can add up to quite a number. In areas like Quail Hollow, where the county is already using Measure D funds to resurface the roads, using what they're calling a cave seal, which is kind of the next step up from the type two slurry, we have worked out an agreement with them where rather than us having to completely resurface the road and then them come in and resurface behind us, we are able to limit the amount of work that we do in backfilling the trench. We don't need to do what they call the T-cut. We're not required to put AC outboard of the actual excavation. Under ordinary circumstances, this T-cut would be required where using as an example, a two foot wide trench, which is fairly typical for us, we would then be required to also grind out two feet to either side of that trench Mm -hmm. and then resurface that entire six foot wide area with new asphalt and then seal over the top of everything. Because we're working with them through this Measure D funding, mm -hmm. excuse me, we are able to not perform the T-cut in these areas. We simply resurface the two foot wide area that we cut out for our trench, reducing the amount of asphalt that we're putting down by two thirds. And then the amount that we would have spent putting down the type two slurry, we contribute to the county towards their Cape seal. So the savings is in the asphalt, mm -hmm. but it, it can be 
pretty significant. In the case of Quail Hollow, we're looking at over a mile at four feet wide. So let's call it 25,000 or so square feet of asphalt, four inches thick, which adds up to quite a pretty penny. Thank you for that explanation. I apologize for my misunderstanding. I thought this was being timed because it was one of the projects that we were trying to, to time alongside some other work being done by the county. So my misunderstanding, but thank you. That was really helpful. No worries, glad I could help. Any other, uh, Bob, did you have anything, question, comment? I, I just wanted to echo what Mark was saying about getting multiple bids in. Um, great trend. Um, you know, keep keep it up. And Josh, I'm I'm going to give you the benefit of the fact that you've been out soliciting people and really working hard to get people to bid on this. And I think it, I think the results of that are showing in spades. Thank you. Um, Lois, did you have anything you wanted to comment on? Uh, no, I I agree with this Glen Arbor Bridge uh, main line pipe replacement awarded. <clears throat> All right. Um, just a kind of a question here. I, I, about the motion, the recommendation for the motion, I was a little bit confused by it and I wanna make sure that I get it right. Is, is it says that we're directing the district manager to enter into negotiations. And is that really what we're doing or are we not ask, directing him to um, enter into a contract? And shouldn't we be putting the amount of money that the bid is in, in the motion? To answer, it seems three questions. Um, in regards what we're actually asking the district manager to do, or what I'm suggesting, is that the board instruct Rick and staff to negotiate specific terms, things like schedules, insurance requirements, uh, construction management issues, chain of communication for requests for information, for submittals, review process, all of kind of the minutia of how the project is going to work, because those, many of those things need to be spelled out in the contract. What follows then is that we would enter into the contract. Okay. And I agree that you are correct that the dollar value should be in the motion, and I apologize for leaving that out. Yeah, well, I mean, I can add that, but I guess I'm just saying that as the board, our job is to, uh, eventually we're going to have to actually approve, you know, spending the money. So um, that's what I want to make sure I, we do right. Gina? Yeah, I, I, I would like to just offer kind of a streamlined motion here. Yes, for the board's consideration. Great. Um, uh, motion uh, to authorize and uh, authorize and direct the district manager to enter into a contract with Monterey Peninsula Engineering for the Glen Arbor Bridge Pipeline construction project in an amount not to exceed uh, $320,500. Thank you. That is the motion. Um, I will go ahead and make that motion. I'll second, second that. Okay. Um, let's go out and ask if the members, anybody in the public would uh, like to comment or ask a question. Okay, I don't see any hands up. Um, any other final comments by members of the board before we go ahead and vote on the motion? All right, and seeing none, go ahead, Holly. President Mayhood. Aye. Vice President Henry. Yes. Director Ackman. Yes. Director Foles. Yes. Director Smalley. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Um, next we have uh, basically the same project, but now the construction management aspect of it. Josh. Thank you, Chair. I'm moderately embarrassing after the previous accolades regarding numbers of bids. This one only got two. However, 
This item is construction management related to construction of the replacement pipeline across Glen Arbor Bridge. It was complicated by the fact that this project is going to be entirely night work. So that leads to the lower number of bids. I did have several companies mention that had it been day work, they would have been proposing. That said, um, we did receive two bids, the low bid from Sandus Civil Engineers at 61850 the second bid, a firm called Four Leaf Incorporated, with which we have not previously done business, but who I, through some research, determined has a fairly good reputation in the engineering world, came in at 82548 As a result, staff is recommending that award be made to Sandus. Both bids were complete, no exceptions to them. And I will cheerfully take questions. Okay. Again, going to Mark first. Um, okay, thanks. Um, I did review, uh, in particular, Santis's bid. Uh, Santis uh, put together a complete proposal for us. They did... Uh, a, took an extra effort to review drawings and provide comments on the drawings, um, asking questions, making suggestions uh, for the engineering drawings uh, that are part of this package. So in my mind, they went above and beyond what construction manager would typically put into a proposal. Uh, so good for them in doing that. Um, Josh, I think the messages that you've delivered to them uh, from some of their previous submittals, they've received that information and have uh, taken it to heart. So good. Uh, yes, you only received two bids, but uh, this is night work. We do have two bids that are competitive. One is from Sandus, who we've done work with in the past. So I feel comfortable uh, recommending that we make this award to them. Uh, second, I will comment on Four Leaf since I have worked with them in the past on the new Apple project, they had a significant presence on that. And yes, they are a very reputable company. Uh, if they had been the low bid, I would have had no qualms on uh, making the award to them also. Okay. So. That's good to know. Um, we'll start comments with Bob. Did you have anything you wanted to add? Just a just a couple of things, um, you know, Josh. Don't don't sell yourself short. The fact that you got a new supplier because I I didn't recognize the name either into this process to me is significant. It's not only the quantity, but also expanding the breadth of companies that we can get to uh, bid on and support our construction needs. So I, I consider this a huge win uh, for getting that. Um, and I, the only thing I would say is, you know. Please encourage them to apply again and provide them some guidance on, you know, maybe how they can uh, uh, do better the next time. And, and hopefully they will bid the next time. Okay. Uh, Lois, did you want to say anything? Well, I think Santis is a good firm. Uh, they have the lower bid uh, by like $20,000. So I, I think Santis is the right ones to give this contract to. Jamie? Nope, low bidder, well experienced, know, knows our uh, district. Yeah. Okay. Um, are there any uh, comments from uh, the public or questions? All right. Um, I'm going to modify the recommendation that was made because there was a uh, an error in referring to what project this was. So let me um, try to state it here. That the motion is to direct the district manager to enter into a contract with Sandus Civil Engineers um, for construction management activities related to the Glen Arbor Ridge Pipeline Replacement Project. Um, in an amount not to exceed $61,850. Second. Okay. 
Um, Holly, would you take the roll call vote, please? President Mayhood? Aye. Vice President Henry? Yes. Director Ackman? Yes. Director Fulce? Yes. And Director Smalley? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Um, next, we come to um, the contract for the Brookdale Viaduct Pipeline Construction Project. Josh? Thank you, Chair. This, this next item is one that was a little bit interesting in that Caltrans is expanding a viaduct south of Brookdale in Highway 9 and is requiring us to reroute some of our pipeline in order to make room for retaining walls and piers for their viaduct. They notified us of this in March, I believe, it might have been February of last year, and we prepared a plan set. The intention discussed with Caltrans at that time was that once they had awarded their work, they would pass along contact info for their contractor and we would negotiate with that contractor for them to do our work, realign our pipeline at the same time, thus economizing on things like traffic control and mobilization. I received a phone call early in December from Caltrans telling us that they'd awarded the project a while back and that their contractor was Gordon N. Ball. I reached out to Gordon Ball, went back and forth for a couple of weeks, ended up with a bid that seemed very high, just shy of $300,000, roughly $1,300 per linear foot for a six inch pipe, way too much. So I talked to Rick about how to go about essentially a, a very short notice RFP. Reached out to about a dozen construction firms, ended up getting two additional bids in addition to Gordon Balls. And during the same time period, I was in discussion with Caltrans to find ways to reduce the scope of the work that they were requiring of us to simplify the project essentially. All said and done, we received three bids as outlined in the memo. Gordon Balls came down to $221,512. The low bid was from Reber Construction at $166,000, much more palatable. And Granite Construction also bid on the project and came in at $215,000. At this point, staff is recommending that Reber be awarded the project. They are prepared to begin work on Monday. We have discussed with Caltrans what is to be done, how best to do it, and how to find ways to shorten the duration of the project without sacrificing quality or safety. <laughs> I'm in that vein, I am recommending that the board instruct the district manager to enter into a contract with Reber Construction for the amount of $166,000 to complete this project. And I'm happy to take questions. Okay. Mark, any comments from you? Um, yes, uh, just as some further clarifications. Um, I understand from um, an email exchange that um, I've had with Josh, it is forwarded to the rest of the board members uh, that Reber is uh, acceptable to Caltrans um, and that the exclusions that they've spelled out in their contract, we are okay with. Um, so based on that, we don't anticipate uh, or that there's likely change orders from them based on their exclusions. The um, work as proposed by Reber is being done during daylight work hours. Granite's proposal, which is more expensive, Granite was proposing to do at night so that they could be more efficient with it. More efficient, but their costs are higher. So uh, with all of the input that I was able to get from Josh, 
uh, I feel better about Reber's uh, proposal and concur that we should move ahead with issuing them a contract. Can I, can I ask whether we've worked with these folks before? Yes, we have. Okay. And in, in a with a happy result, huh? Yes, Reber is a local <laughs> contractor that has done a huge amount of work up and down the valley. All right, great. Um, Lois, did you have anything you wanted to add? Not really. Okay. Uh, Jamie? So I just wanted to clarify, I heard you saying that um, you you had a sort of foreshortened um, bidding process, it sounds like, because we weren't happy with uh, um, the estimate that we got from Gordon and Ball. Um, is there any reason that that would, that they would have a reason to challenge that? No, they, they were given every opportunity. I mean, certainly they were asked to provide a price before anyone else even knew there was a project. So if anything, Granite would be the one who could complain mm -hmm. that Gordon Ball got some advance notice. But I was very clear in my discussions with Granite and well, with all three of what the situation was and why the foreshortened bidding period existed. Thank you. Uh, Certainly. Just just a question, a quick question on uh, when you say local, Josh, because I, I love local. I wish we could do more with local contractors. By local, do you mean San Lorenzo Valley? Uh, yes. Valley local? San Lorenzo Valley local. Uh, this is this, this is another huge win in my mind. Um, and I, I hope we can get more local contractors to work with us on construction projects, particularly as we move from the main lines to the distribution and laterals uh, in the future. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna kind of, um, I'll place a motion because this is a little, the recommendation's a little puzzling here. Um, so we'll direct the district manager to enter into a contract with Reber Construction Company for the Brookdale Viaduct Pipeline construction project um, in an amount not to exceed $166,000. I'll second that. Okay. Um, are there any comments from members of the public? No? Um, sorry. Um, Okay, uh, I don't see any comments. So Holly, you want to um, go ahead and uh, take a roll call vote. President Mayhood. Aye. Vice President Henry. Yes. Director Ackman. Yes. Director Falls. Yes. Director Smalley. Yes. Okay, uh, motion passes unanimously. Okay, and um, the next uh, item of business is the CAL FIRE Fire Prevention Grant Resolution Representative. Yes, and I will ask the, the District's Environmental Programs Manager uh, to present this item to the board, uh, Carly. Great, thank you. So this year we are going after CAL FIRE's fire prevention grants. Um, we're hoping to go after 14 pump stations and harden those from um, burnable materials to, to uh, fire resistant materials, as well as complete fuel reduction on about 20 infrastructure sites. And then also potentially remove hazard trees from the P-vine section of the five mile pipeline. As part of this funding, it would be approximately $1.5 million that would we be requesting. Um, to continue with the grant application, we do need a resolution from the board appointing a signatory from staff. Um, we've chosen the district manager to be that person, and then the environmental programs manager and myself as the point of contact. Um, so it's recommended that the board review the memo, approve the memo, and appoint the district manager as the signatory. This seems pretty straightforward. Does anybody have any comments on it? I'm just happy we're getting grants. 
Huge. Um, yes. All right. Um, how about um, any comments from members of the public? All right. So let me um, again let let me restate the motion here, which is um, that we uh, the board approves the attached resolution appointing the district manager as the district representative to be the signatory and point of contact for the CAL FIRE fire prevention grant. I'll second that. All right. Um, Holly, you want to take a roll call vote? President Mayhood? Aye. Vice President Henry? Yes. Director Ackman? Yes. Director Fulz? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Okay. Motion passes unanimously. Um, final item of new business is the standard specifications and details policy. So again, this looks like it's Josh presenting. Yep. District Engineer will present this item. Thank you. Historically, the district has operated without a board adopted set of standard specifications or standard details. As background, these documents provide engineers, contractors, and homeowners with the information they need to ensure that new construction and or remodeling of projects within the district are built, one, in conformance with current industry best practices and current codes, two, utilizing materials consistent with district policies and engineering or operational decisions, and three, in ways consistent across projects, enabling operations, maintenance, and repair or rehabilitation of those facilities by the district regardless of the builder. During the CZU fire recovery effort, FEMA has repeatedly asked for documentation of the standards used to construct facilities which were lost in the fires. The lack of previously adopted standards has led to many hours of searching through historic plan sets to figure out how such things were built. The proposed standards when adopted will alleviate this issue in any future disaster by providing that standard documentation for all projects. Staff have worked to produce a comprehensive set of standard specifications to include standard details and recommend adoption by resolution of these standards. In addition, these standard specifications and details have been reviewed and discussed by the engineering committee. And Director Smalley has led that committee to um, concur with staff's recommendation previously. And I'm happy to take any questions. I guess I would just like to start out by saying congratulations because I think you finally brought something to completion that <laughs> previous engineers have tried to move along, but you've actually moved it to completion. And so we really appreciate that. Um, Thank you. Congratulations on that. So uh, Mark, anything you want to add? Yes, um, I've worked on similar documents uh, during my career. This is a very laborious process. Um, that needs detailed review in order to get things complete. So I commend Josh and the rest of the engineering staff in being able to complete this um, somewhat boring task, but completely necessary. In addition to everything that Josh spelled out, I think it also better informs uh, contractors what the district wants as far as of uh, standard materials, components, um, parts, supplies, and everything else um, on projects. So good work. Okay. Um, any other comments from the board? Bob? Yes, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, Josh, I got to say, this is your night, apparently, for, uh, <laughs> for things. I, I'm just incredibly impressed here. Um, to me, this is uh, like the second really major accomplishment uh, that has been outstanding for a long time. The inventory was the first one. And this, I think, really brings home a lot of work that, as Gail said, has been outstanding for a while. Uh, you are to be commended uh, just to the moon for having done this and having worked on the inventory, presumably at a lot of the same time, since I know this wasn't done overnight. So uh, thank you for doing that. Um, one question I had, will this be posted on the website? Yes. 
the Fabulous. current drafts are posted once we have once the board has adopted the standards and specs and details they will replace the drafts that are currently available perfect thank you Uh, Gina. Uh, I, I just wanted to add, Josh I, I, and uh, other members of the staff, I'd suggest posting the resolution with it um, since it, you know, elevates it to the level of a policy decision that's, um, I, I think that would be useful. Will do. Jamie, did I see your hand come up? Yeah, I was just going to, you know, congratulate you as well on this. I think, you know, obviously I've you know, I, I'm sure this took a huge amount of work and, and was something that has been in the uh, pipeline for a long time, but um, there are a lot of homeowners trying to rebuild who are going to really appreciate having access to this. Um, so thank you for getting it done. Okay. Any other comments from the board? Um, how about from members of the... I, I wanted... Oh, just... sorry. I'm sorry, Lois. Go ahead. I just wanted to say... This is so thorough, just bursting with information. <laughs> Thank you, Josh, and the committee. Okay. All right, any comments from members of the um, public? I don't see any. So um, what we have is um, that we, um, the motion is to, approve the attached resolution adopting um, the standard specifications for construction of water facilities within the district. Second. Second? Second. Okay, thank you. Holly, would you um, go ahead and take a vote? Mayor Mayhood, did I miss public comment on this item? Yes, I already yes. asked. Oh, you did. Yeah. President Mayhood? Aye. Vice President Henry? Yes. Director Ackman? Yes. Director Foles? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Okay. Motion passes unanimously. Um, next on the agenda is the consent um, agenda involving meeting minutes. Does anybody uh, want to um, remove something from the consent agenda? Um, next, we move to district reports. Um, are there any questions from the board concerning district reports? Uh, Bob? I have a number of them. Uh, do we want to go through each report one at a time or just ask all my questions in order? Um, why don't, well, let's, let's go ahead and um, just go ahead and start. If other people have questions on the same report, raise your hand and we'll pop in. But otherwise, go ahead. Okay. Um, on the environmental report, um, uh, this will probably be for Carly. There was a note here about grant tracking table. Um, I, I, my apologies if I missed it, but I, I didn't see it. And I, I'm very interested in this because I'm, I'm thinking the ROI we're doing here is pretty high and I'd just like to confirm that belief. Right. Unfortunately, it looks like it was left out of the agenda packet. So the next round, I'll make sure it's in there and updated for the board. But but we are getting a really good ROI. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah we've done pretty good in the last year. So hopefully to that continue is, that. <laughs> yes, that is great. And uh, keep, keep it coming. It's great stuff. Um, on the finance report, I had a question on the, it's... Um, Page 358, three of 33, there was an operating revenue line, and I just wanted to confirm that that operating revenue included uh, the CZU surcharge revenue as well. Um, let me see. Hold on one moment while I open my no, no report word. up. My no end. Word. No word. <laughs> Take your time. You want to say the page number again? Was it 358? Yeah, 358, uh, three of 33. Okay. Bob, yes, that does include the surcharge. Fabulous. Okay. On the um, 
on the past due, um, I just wanted to comment, it looks like all but one category went down. So this is really good news. And that is I'm excluding balances under 30 because those are current. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I, I include, I added an extra line in there um, that some, all the balance of the counts, all 30 days plus past due. Um, I think you had requested that at a prior meeting. Yes, um, so that, I, that's great. Thank you yeah. for doing that. Mm -hmm. um, now this, I, I hope this can continue and that people can recover. Um, yeah, it's, it's really good news. Uh, Kendra, does this include the, the funds received from the state, though? I mean, should we make a comment on that? Yes. No? So we received funding um, from the State Water Resources Control Board for um, a program they had for water arrearages uh, for customers that had past due bills accrued from March 4th, 2020 to 2021. Um, we received the funding for that in January. So on the December finance status report, we'll see those uh, past due balances decrease even further. Um, I think the total amount received was, or that we applied to customer accounts was around 140,000. Um, so you'll definitely, December report, you'll see past due balances drop even further. That's absolutely fantastic. Yep. Good, good news. Let, let me just, did Jamie, did you have a follow-up question on this? Why not, Bob, if I, you don't mind. Let yeah, no problem, no problem. I'm sorry, I, I, I do. Um, I, I work for Community Bridges, which is a nonprofit. We do a lot of um, case management, uh, particularly around economic relief related to the pandemic. And so I hear what you're saying, that we're going to be applying those arrears to those past due um, water bills. Um, but I know in my professional world, we have people calling us asking like, what do I do? I've got these late bills. How do I get access to funding? So what are we as the water district going to be doing to communicate to people who, who may be in arrears that, that there is relief for them? So anyone, any customer that we applied that, uh, those payments to their account, give a letter from us stating uh, the amount that was credited to their account and any remain because because it didn't cover the their total account balance um uh we stated that any remaining balance they're able to call us call us and set up a, a payment arrangement that that was one of the guidelines we already offer that anyways but that was one of the guidelines um that the state had in their program that we needed to extend um payment plans to any remaining balances um so we are, we've always offered payment plans. So any customer can call in and any remaining balance and you know, set up installments for them to pay that off. Um, we are, there was money left over in the budget that this um, allocated, which was about 905 million. And I think only 350 million was actually applied for. So we're waiting to hear if there's going to be another round of funding for that. Um, but that's, I think that's still in the works. Great. And there if is I could just one follow-up. I'm sorry, Rick. I was no, just ahead. No, go ahead. I was there's just... information that you can share with like the local, you know, nonprofits who are who are in contact with these low-income communities who are looking for these um, this kind of relief. It would be really helpful just so that they can be giving correct information to people who are calling them, you know, asking these questions. Um, thank you. I was just going to say that there is an item in the Budget and Finance Committee uh, this month on uh, that program, and it's on the agenda, or it's on the uh, the website. I'm sorry, if you want to get more information on that program and the amounts we receive and credit. Just to clarify, we apply for it, not not. Right. Yeah, we apply for it. That's correct. So we, we apply for it, and then we announce to these uh, right. individuals that you know, a fairy godmother has come down and paid part of their balance. So they don't actually have to do anything. No, Correct. Okay, uh, uh, so let, let's go back to you, Bob. No, no worries. Um, on the engineering report, uh, just to comment that Josh is obviously keeping himself just a little busy. So uh, keep the pedal to the metal. And I also wanted to just make sure I understood the note about the Felton Heights tank project, which is a project that's been outstanding for a while. 
do I understand that, that, that we now have all the easements for that, that, that we can now proceed? We do not at this time. The ball is in the property owner's court. Uh, District Council and myself has put together memos and sent to him, and we're trying to get uh, him to agree now. Um, he's been slow to respond, but we hope that he, we are very close, but we're not there yet. Okay, we did, just may want to update the, the um, status report just to make that clear. Um, okay. And then the last uh, question that is in operations, but uh, you know, I don't want to stress your voice, Rick. And uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, let's okay. let's yeah. see what we can do. All right. So the North System looks like it's back online. Surface water. Okay, we have we have Foreman Creek is yep. online, and that was yep. put in as an emergency pipeline installation right. right after by the ground was still smoking on CZU. I understand that, but we're now taking water. What I meant is we're taking water out of that now. That is correct. Perfect. And then I noticed that water went both ways on the Felton uh, inner tie. Uh, how, how did that happen? Well, these first rains have been problematic to district sources, um, being um, with sampling for VOCs. The first rains were still sampling Fall Creek for VOCs mm -hmm. and okay. Foreman Creek. Fall Creek had a lot of gravel and high turbidity that wouldn't clear. Again, we contribute that to um, CZU. So mm -hmm. Fall Creek was offline and we moved water from the north into Felton. Okay, and we can do that under the fact that we're still in an emergency situation. We're still under emergency. Right now, 98% of our water system is on surface water. Yeah, that's great, actually. I mean, mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, and then I just wanted to mention that it looks like we met all of our big trees uh, flow requirements except for three days. So that's actually pretty darn good because I know October, November tends to be a tough uh, month for us. So, right. And and this right. year, obviously, we will have a wet, uh, wet flow requirement. So it won't be a dry season. It will be a wet season. The right. Fall Creek is producing... You know, very strongly, and so is Foreman Creek, and we are under the emergency until we get um, additional sources on in the North System. Great. Sorry about that with your voice, Rick. All right. Thank you very great. much. I'm going to have to cough. So that, uh... Okay. Anything else, Bob? That is it. Thank you. Okay. Any other um, comments by members of the board? Uh, let me go out to the the dwindling public out there, the three um, diehards, do they have any comments on any of the department status reports or committee reports? Okay. Uh, seeing none, um, we've. Oh, there is sorry. one. Larry Ford, go ahead. Hi, this is Larry Ford Felton. I just wanted to thank you all for a very efficient, productive meeting. I think the meeting was well run, and I'm glad that. People were well enough that we could get back um, into an actual meeting. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for those encouraging words, Rick, uh, Larry. Okay. All right. Um, anything else? I get it. I'm, we're at the end of our agenda. So um, if, if I don't hear any objections, I will go ahead and adjourn us for this evening. Okay. Bye. Bye, right, everyone. Bye. Melissa, I have 7.32 as our sign-off time.